Hello everyone and welcome back to this month's training session. Daniel, our ever exciting host, will be sharing all his favorite artwork tips with us today. Uh, but before I hand over to him, just the usual housekeeping items, a recorded version of this training session will be available at the bottom of our registration page. Should you have any questions, post them at um, post them in the chat and we will address those at the end. Uh, regarding our upcoming training, we have it's raining free extras of Office 365 on the 29th of January at 12.30. Um, so we'll send another reminder on that one. And then also, if you want to see all our future trainings, just go to our registration page, vertec.co.nz forward slash training. And um, that's it. Over to Daniel. Yeah, g'day, guys. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm recording this. Hopefully, the audio is not terrible. Um, I'm in my new office location, uh, home office location, and it's. Um, uh, tell you what, hey, could you? Thank you for muting him. Thank you. Um, and um, we've just moved houses out to Puhoi. Um, haven't even got blinds here, so it's a bit blinding bright um, out there right now. So I apologise for that. But I'm just going to go straight into sharing my screen. Uh, and whipping out some uh, some skills. All right, stand by. Where are we? Zoom. Okay, share screen. Good stuff. All right. Okay, so um, one of the one of the little things that I was just going to share straight away is that within Outlook there is like that's nice and bright right but if you're on a if you're on a, um, a laptop sorry could you mute the person in the background there bianca great stuff okay so um if you're on a laptop and you're trying to conserve a bit of power or even if you just find yourself squinting at your laptop throughout the day uh you can switch your whole um uh, office settings across to what is called dark mode and that's under outlook well option file options uh, and coming down here into the general tab and then go to the theme there's a couple of options in there uh, but straight out black uh, looks like this and that just a bit easier on the eyes and it reverses the text color so that it's um, still uh easy to read um from that kind of perspective so there you go that's my first tip dark mode all right and uh, i will just switch that back because it actually doesn't look fantastic when you're trying to do this kind of thing so general office theme and i'll just use white boom and that will change it across not just outlook but across the rest of your um uh office for sweet all right the second one is uh public holidays into your calendars right like a, a real common one is um getting in like the new zealand uh public holidays calendar all right which makes it easy for you know seeing exactly what's coming up so you don't get surprised by oh my god it's christmas day bank holidays etc all right the way to do that is open up your Outlook Web Access. And coming across into calendar. I'm on a uh, hotspot at the moment, so it's a little bit uh, flaky. Uh, click in calendar, add calendar in here. Uh, you can add in personal ones, but you can also subscribe from the web and other ones, right? Um, adding uh, from um, like the holidays is the one that I was referring to. You can just search out your country, New Zealand, boom, clickety click, and it will put it into Outlook Web Access, and then also it puts it through into uh, your outlook local account as an entry in there 
simple as. All right, so the next one is, um, well, I find this very useful. So you're in a back and forth um, uh, email conversation with a, uh, a third party and you've been agreeing on a time and date to actually have that meeting. Um, this little icon here, reply with meeting, is very useful because you can go straight to setting up a meeting and it keeps all that text so you've got the thread of what you're going to be talking about all there, right? Which I find is very, very useful just to make sure that you're staying on task, all right? Um, another little side one, which I wasn't going to mention, but I'll mention now, is that you can add in a Teams meeting so that these days that's very easy. Most people have got Microsoft Teams installed. Straight away, they're going to click that link and go straight into the Teams meeting with you. All right, um, you can also uh, drag an email to your calendar uh, like that. And it'll do essentially the same thing. Um, here's a new, th new thing within uh, the Microsoft suite. Uh, it comes from social media, but um, you can be typing away and you go, well, um, uh, this is an important message for my wife, Sarah Watson. Well, there we go. Boom. And it starts by putting in the at symbol and then start typing. It's going to look into your contacts and go, oh, who do you want there? Boom. And there you go. Adds it directly into the two field, which is pretty sweet for making these things happen. Okay. So that is very useful. Um, you, the great thing about that is that later on, and actually this um, up here in the search field, you can then do search for those uh, messages straight away, right? So you don't have to type in from colon her full email address. You can just go at start typing and then boom, you're going to find it, all right? It gives you a quick search. Um, what's next on my list? It is, uh, oh yeah, yep. So search folders. Uh, you will find that you're often searching for certain things in here. Uh, you can essentially create um, a search folder. All right, so uh, I have, these are my favorites and you can have them uh, favorited in here. What I've done is, um, under searches, you can add in a new search folder. And then you can create the, the rules behind these searches. And if at a later time you go, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to delete that search folder. Um, it doesn't delete the messages. It just is deleting the search, all right? Um, so that's quite handy if you find that you're constantly looking for certain topics. Uh, for me, it's usually the things which I've marked to follow up that I remember I got to chase up at some stage. Um, and that is a very useful thing. And in one of these folders, right, you can just, to, to make it up, appear at the top, you just uh, right click it and make it favorites. Um, add to favorites, boom. And then you can drag it around from there. Uh, what else? Okay, so um, cleaning up conversations. Sometimes you just end up with a, a, a a bunch of ongoing back and forth messages which kind of build up. Uh, I know some people are really, really good at creating folders for everything and suppliers and clients and then dragging and dropping. I'm, I'm not that organized. Um, I, I kind of have uh, I'm a bit overrun. Uh, so therefore I use the search folders um, uh, that way and just uh, I don't spend a lot of time chasing it up. I, it, it's something I might aspire to, getting down to zero items in my inbox on a daily basis, but um, that's maybe a 2021 uh, New Year's resolution. Uh, so, um, but one of the things you can do is you can come in here and go uh, clean up folder and then um, all redundant messages. So if somebody's emailed you and you emailed them back and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, you've got a lot of redundant information because each one of those messages is going to store all the text from the previous one, right? So 
it's not so much of a problem these days because everybody's got like a 50 gig mailbox um but it does add in a lot of extra items into mailbox and you can like i i don't like the concept com conversation view um myself other people do and so you're wondering now what the conversation view is um you can show as conversations all right and it will uh consolidate all those messages all right so that you're seeing less of them um right uh and it, and it shows you that there is um more messages in there right um in and behind that uh but the cleanup folder is actually just removing all the additional messages it just keeps the kind of the latest in it as it were um as long as and there are some settings in this so it's useful to see um as long as you are not um well by default when a reply modifies a message don't move the original because what you often are doing is like sometimes you go in and you're like oh, actually maybe i don't want to forward that on to um this person so there you go nice full useful feature just to tidy things up okay so what's next on my list of things to talk about um insert calendar into email so if you want to share your um like your week with somebody uh you can go in here and go whoop, insert and it's going to go right what's the date range um next seven days um and by default it's just going to show free busy attentive right um and then you can also set your working hours and you can go into a few other details all right so that's what they're going to end up seeing inside there um you might say look try and find a time find a time to talk to me about that that's one way you can get around that uh chasing people back and forth as to when's a good meeting time uh now a little bit of an annoyance thing there there was a utility that i used regularly and i've done a, um, a video on this going back in the past called find time uh which i do recommend however immediately prior to this i did a updates on my outlook uh, or my office suite and the the add-in has dropped off my outlook um and i just noticed it when it was five minutes to this um but within within um the microsoft opera, um uh, ecosystem they've made this uh essentially this um um space for plugins where you can add in there's lots of free ones in here there's some paid ones and it's ways that you can optimize your experience and there's there's possibly something to do with an application that you're using now that can be tapped in here um i like find time it, what it does is that you're creating a meeting poll that you send through to the multiple people because you know if you've got people from three different organizations and you're trying to meet to discuss one particular uh topic um you find that you know most people are busy and they're like i'm available on tuesdays and wednesdays and then then somebody else comes back and says no i'm only available monday and friday and you're like pulling your hair out because you're just wasting time going back and forth using a tool like find time uh which can be um installed at an organizational level as well if you if you if you'd like to have that happen you can ask the service desk about that uh is a way of just making that simple create a meeting poll you select the times which would be working for you you go you know as many times as you like over um in a day and across multiple days and then people just vote on them and then as you can see in the little screenshots there the people who say yes that's fine and then will automatically choose the soonest date that suits um everybody and boom it's done and it just appears in um in your email when you and here as a as an extra um add-in um sharing a calendar of your outlook web access so i'll just whip back to outlook web access um you can share out your calendar uh to external people as well permanently all right um so if you've got somebody who is i don't know a um i know a, a a pa that you've hired in in the philippines and basically you're just getting her to monitor your your mailbox to to handle all the important stuff you can you have to use outlook web access for this um 
you can share calendars within Outlook, but it would just be for within your organization. And here um, I can send it to I know, Daniel Adam, Intrepid.kiwi, um, cool. And by default, it's just going to go can view all details. But you can just say, look, make it just so I'm busy, all right? Um, that person, if they're outside your organization, they won't be able to edit anything. If you're inside the organization, then you can provide um, additional uh, rights in there as well. And they'll get an email which enables them to either download the, uh, the file and add it as a subscription into their Outlook or view it via web. Okay, so where am I up to now? Number eight, uh, no, number nine, sharing, we've just done that. Number 10, time zones and calendar. Oh yeah, this is pretty cool, right? If you're a person who regularly commutes uh, across different time zones, you are going to find this really neat, all right? So normally you're looking at this and you have to do this mental arithmetic about whether, you know, if somebody's in LA and you're trying to set up a meeting with them or you've got a supplier and is an Aussie, uh, there is a cool way you can get around this. Okay, so you can come into here into options, dun, 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 into calendar, down to time zones. And here's one that I've um, added in here and here's one on here. Uh, you can change and call them what, what you like um, and you can add in the time zones. All right, and then click OK and boom. Straight away, it tells you what that time slot is. That's going to be 8 a.m. in Aussie, 1 p.m. the previous day for uh, La La Land LA. All right, uh, switching that off is easy as doing that. And there's one other thing I was going to show you uh, there. If you're moving yourself between these sites, then what's quite handy is that you can swap it around and it changes your default time zone, all right? What your calendar will show as. Without you having to fiddle around with your time settings or anything else like that, you can work it just like that. Neat, eh? Make sure I get that right. Boom. Hmm. Okay, so if you find and when you're sending emails to people that you're doing a lot of repetitive text yeah you could store the text in a um, in a notepad file or something like that um, alternatively you can create templates so templated text um, here's one like that boom done oh i've got to fix up that okay but that way you know you can have a whole bunch in there and um it, that it can be a massive time saving if a lot of what you're doing is process orientated and you're like all right and also you want to make sure that you've crafted exactly the right email you can just have that edited and um, edited in here and that way you're less, less likely to make a mistake and leave out important information because if you've got you, you need to convey the same information to multiple people multiple times it's better that you have it documented out and saved in there so that you can plonk it in there and then edit as you will. Another handy thing in here is if sometimes somebody uses, uh, I don't know, like um, pusil, pusil, animus, uh, you know, complicated words like that. I think I've got that spell right. Um, you can come down and go, well, there's obviously the synonyms. Um, but I can also check, do a search on that and see if that is actually a real world, real word. And lo, lo and behold, it is um, showing a lack of courage, or determination, timid. It was one of my father's favorite words. Um, I think he just liked it because it's really hard to say. Pusillanimity, pusillanimous, pusillanimous. Yeah, um, which is neat. But you can do that on anything and it gives you the web results. Um, it's powered by Bing. Sorry about that, but there's not much I can do about that. But there you go. Uh, that is also a useful tool for looking things up and going, what the hell are they talking about? Uh, at this time of year, everybody should know, should be putting out their, getting prepared to put in their out of office notifications. Uh, so it's coming down into here, hitting um, automatic replies, uh, set them up, um, do an inside one versus an outside one because uh, you may have a very different messaging for that kind of stuff. Um, and you can set the dates so it only sends during that time. 
uh, and that's pretty cool as well. All right, um, please, you know, it just saves you having to respond to emails when you're on holiday because somebody's emailed you and you now know because you haven't done an auto um, response, they're going to be assuming you got the email and that you're going to reply back to them where that's going to be very hard for you when you're sitting in a camper van somewhere in the South Island. It's not like anybody's traveling this year. Um, and where am I going to next? I am, oh, keyboard shortcuts. Man, I'm smashing through this quick, aren't I? All right, so let's go into keyboard shortcuts. So there's a bunch in here you may know already, right? Control N uh, launches a new email, right? And if anybody's used a mouse for a long time, like, I mean, I've, I've, I worked in a network operations center um, in the late nineties and everything we did was via a mouse and there was a lot of clicking, right? And over time, I just found that my, you know, I started getting RSI uh, and uh, I was bemoaning the fact that these new systems hadn't actually included any keyboard shortcuts. Well, um, keyboard shortcuts save time because if you're taking you a few seconds to move your mouse from one side of the screen, so you go click file new and you can just go control N on your keyboard, boom, boom, done, all right? So there's a few things, other ones in here that I am going to mention. So right now we're in our mail. Uh, I can go uh, control two and go to the calendar. Control one to go back to inbox. Control three to get to contacts. And that's just basically, it's um, switching between mail, which is one, calendar two, contacts three or four for tasks. All right, very easy, okay. Um, on the topics of context, I'm just going to zip back to that because I did skip it. All right. Um, one of the things I, I think is a really good idea is that you, um, often when you're writing an email, right? I'll just do control N for a new email. Okay. And you just start typing. If you've ever manually typed in somebody's email address before, right, it's going to start popping up. Now that is just a suggestion. It's just a cached entry. What I recommend is that uh, at some point you um, right click and go add to Outlook contacts, right? Um, and then oh, and then put in things like their mobile number, right? Because a lot of the time you're gonna be using your phone you know, to, to email them when you're on the fly and it's handy to have their phone number as well that you can just do that. All right. So you just copy and paste that in and get it done, you know, so, so that it's not like um, a hassle later on. I, I find it's annoying when I have to go searching through emails on my phone in order to find their one email where they actually included their signature. So I can actually call them. Um, if, if I did this more often, uh, it'd be a bit of a time saver. Um, another thing is, um, if you've got a new person in your organization, uh, like we have, like Nick, um, I, I've got multiple email addresses for him and maybe I just want the email address which is associated with his company account. I can do control K and it's actually gonna select the address from my global address book. Um, so the global address book is, is my internal email addresses, all right? Just, just our um, company address book. Right, which is quite handy. Um, also, if you're doing, I don't know, um, what would be a good one? All right, so if there's an autocomplete in here, which is wrong, because you typed it in wrong, you can you can purge them out by um, uh, going and typing it up and then just go, yep, delete that one, cool. And within options, you can purge them, all of them out, but not many people want to do that <laughs> um, because that may be the, all of their um, email addresses because they've never created contacts. It's a good idea to create contacts because the minute, then it will um, pass from your Outlook on your laptop onto your phone, all right? Um, so you've got your contacts with you wherever you are. And if you change laptops, it's going to be with you there too. Oh, right, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. Keyboard shortcuts, back to keyboard shortcuts. Um, so a handy thing in here is also control G and you can go to a particular date. Um, 
uh, I think you can even do things like that. Boom. It's fairly smart. So what I did there is I did a control G and I typed in Christmas 2019 and it figured that out. I think you can do last day of the month and it'll take you to the last day of this of this current calendar month. That's that's a cool little uh, feature. Um, you can also hit F3, uh, hang on, uh, on my laptop. Um, F3, uh, if you've got a laptop, maybe you might have to press function F3 because it's not like your, um, you know, your full size keyboard. It's got the additional things like, you know, making it brighter or not. And you can do your searches for things within the search field like um, uh, ID agent and it'll find you entries where you might have talked about that particular topic in a meeting, which can be handy too. When did we talk about that last? I can't recall. Man, didn't he say this? And there might be some meeting notes there that you can refer back to. Uh, all right, let's go back into the inbox and pick something like, all right, Vine Online. Uh, well, you can go Control um, R to reply to it. Yeah, that's a handy one. All right, Control R is a reply. You can, can do Control F for forwarding it to somebody. You can do Control Shift R, which is reply to all. That's probably not a, a great one. What about this one? Uh, Control Shift R. No, oh damn, because they only reply back to me. But yes, I think you'll get the message there. Um, you can go Control U to make it unread and Control Q to make it read, which is useful for your mind state. Um, and you can also do a, when you're inside an email, um, you can do it F7, oh, wrong one, F7, to do a spell check and grammar check on it. Easy, F7. Uh, what else is useful? Okay, so I'll just get rid of that, get rid of that. Um, Let's say I've had a message from, oh yeah, so fast, there we go. And, but I want to, I, I don't really want to read this. Um, I can um, get it to be read aloud to me by Microsoft. XG firewall customer. As of January 15, 2021, older versions of XG firewall V18 firmware. And you can change the speed. You can change the voice. Um, uh, and you can skip forward and it'll just read it in the, your background for you. Um, I don't know if those voices were coming through on the headphones and the video, but there we go. You can try that out. That's the read aloud button uh, in there. Uh, another very useful thing is you can do, and it does assume you're on a laptop, you've got a microphone, is that you can do dictation. So you can pop into here and go, this is a very important message. And now I've clicked into here and it's going to carry on recording what I'm saying, which is neat. New line. I really should have put a full stop. Full stop. New line. Oh, you lied. <laughs> Smiley face. Sweet. Nice one. Um, and I recommend that you change it to uh, United Kingdom if you're having some issues with that. Uh, it tends to perform better. Okay, we're nearing the end. What's the next one? Uh, dictation switch to save out. Okay. So if you like to, yes, no, thank you. If you like to, um, uh, keep a copy of your, um, messages that you've got going, um, 
and uh, file it, you can save a email and put it in a location where it makes sense. Um, I'm just going to put this on the desktop for now. Uh, for easy reference. Yep. So then you can just open that up and you don't even need Outlook open. So if you like to keep, you know, important messages relating to a correspondence or a contract or a customer um, communication, you can plonk that into your customer folder if you um, don't have some kind of line of business CRM that does that for you. That is a an handy way to do that. Um, you can do that with email. You can do it with um, with calendar items as well. Uh, sometimes it's handy to do this right click open a new window uh, so you have like outlook inbox open and uh, your calendar items and you can drag and drop that i just want that there um, i can just drag that out onto the desktop and it creates a little ics file um, again easy to rick um, forward onto people as well um, you can do that with context too. And the last little tip, the last little tip, which is kind of neat. Um, if you're finding that, um, well, what you can do is that you can change the subject of a, um, an email. Uh, as you like and save that and that's going to be saved in my inbox just as I did that and that was my last real tip um, uh, now I'm open to any questions you might have I'm just looking back over my list of things of neat tips um, does anybody have anything they want me to uh talk about with regards to outlook um otherwise it'll be a fairly short session today we don't have any questions at the moment i think everyone needs a minute to take it all in and uh, put it into practice i know i did i did blast through that um hopefully there's something handy in there for for for, for some people um uh I, I tried to find the most useful things that have come up or have turned up in more recent versions of Office 365. Um, and uh, I, it, it is a, a ever evolving beast. So it's worth checking out, seeing what is the, the, um, the new things. And we'll probably update this video in a year's time with whatever the new versions are when it comes out to 2021. All right. Yeah, Kiara says thank you, great stuff. Um, yeah, and then we've got another message saying thanks, Daniel and Dan. Have a great Christmas break from Eden Effect. So, yeah. Thank you, guys. I hope you all have a, um, a fabulous Christmas um, and New Year's. And, and what I what I like to say is that, you know, make, make an effort to to get some physical exercise in there. Try and try and come back to work in better shape than, than you went off, you know, because I know it's very easy just to chow down on the uh, the Christmas pies and, and basically drinking back Bellinis and Cosmos and, and uh, you know, punishing the liver. It may be evil, but the rest of your body does does need to be flexed out. And, and it's good to start the year like under full steam. That's what I, that's what I really like doing. Um, so um, yeah, I'll, I uh, hope to see you all in the new year. Um, there's lots of things happening at Vertec. Uh, we just keep on building my momentum here and I hope you guys are doing the same too if anybody wants to have a chat about marketing uh what I'm doing what's worked for me uh what might help you out I really like talking marketing at the moment so I'm happy to have a chat with anybody who wants to um have a chin whack on that topic as well so yeah we'll wrap it up there thank you Bianca thank you for everybody thanks, turning yeah. up yeah thanks everyone have a good break cool, cool. all right